One Zambia, One Nation. Good evening and thanks for joining us on tonight's edition of Zanis News. My name is Chisha Mutale. The headlines. Security wings cast safety net at Gold Ridge site in Mumbwa. Vandalism of Zesco cables prolonging power outages. EU injects 60 million kwacha funding towards research and innovation in Africa. And parliamentarians and civic leaders lock horns in soccer match. And now the news in detail. Illegal mining activities have become a common vice in Central Province. The situation has prompted Inspector General of Police, Lemi Kajoba, and the Zambia Air Force, ZAF Commander Collinsbury, to inspect the Gold Ridge site in Mumbwa to help tighten security. Here are the details. Just picking this, who ran with the saw in the hand? They will go and measure it. They will find others are coming up. Illegal mining and encroachment to prospective licensed lands in Mumbwa district have reached alarming levels. After touring the gold sites, Inspector General of Police Lemi Kajoba warned that lawlessness will not be condoned. We have agreed. We have a code of conduct and the discipline that governs us. We can't be seen to come here to provide security at the end of the day. Under the cover of the night, we start doing the wrong things. No, no, no. We cannot allow that. I think that is the more reason why uh, we can, you can see the air commander is here. And I'm here coming from uh, Lusaka. And also we have uh, got the commanding officer. Because we are concerned of what is happening here. ZAF Commander Collins Bali has assured of security at all mining sites. So for now, as we said, our main aim here is to come and provide security. And for the police force with the new um, reinforcements and the Air Force as well, our technology will assist them to be effective in uh, combating this. Yes, so I think we, we, we can safely say we'll have that under control. And also we did talk about the, the gathering of the people around when they have a market in place and we allow that then we're sort of encouraging people. You're actually even advertising it more. Meanwhile, Wakeman Mining Construction Company engineer George Situnyana had this to say. What they're doing here, it's us who are supposed to do this. Okay. Not them coming to get and we get in the presence of government officials, we wash, then we tell them, oh, out of 50 kilograms, there is maybe 5 or 10, 10 grams of gold. So that we, we know that this vein has got such an amount of gold. Then we move to another section, maybe 20 meters away from here, we cut the same line. Then where it is well paying, it will be known, so that we know that where we are going to start from, we'll start from this area to avoid kilfarage and effects. While mining activities are profitable, they should be conducted within the confines of the law. Krugasya Nkuru, Zanis, Mumbwa. We move to Luapula province where the Food Reserve Agency, FRA, has purchased over 13,000 by 50 kilogram bags of white maize from small scale farmers in Mwansabombe district. Details in this report. The maize marketing season in Mwansabombwe district has been described as a success and most small-scale farmers who supplied their white maize to the Food Reserve Agents, FRA, have started getting their pay. About uh, 13,277 bags by 50 kg have already been sold so far. Farmers have already started getting the money through the banks. Yeah, even now when you go to the bank you find uh, quite long queues actually of the farmers that uh, supplied the, the maize the grain to, to the FRA. The marketing season for this year has been uh, fantastic. Farmers are not really complaining in as far as the payments are concerned. The farmers have appreciated government for the time repayments. Farmer wants a bomb to one set to a baby two thousand Yapo Confundo of his city. 
Nambanga tu ali matu ya mukusti shakuni chelenge disi tipa kasi umpa pepe pepe pamo landuwa kazi mbeku lele pako ma transport. So bute kunga bwa tu afuli watu bika la kushere dimu pepe pako tule fili mo na ifu tule ri ma fili shi tishwa fili mo ansa bombo inchi uti cha tu afu. The Lord does however have not been paid since last year. Ba farma ubo taro dira mata bari fora ba difu ya boni tatu afu apa ni na machine shoes. So mo bute kuto roke shere nipo. Tuto afu kunsa la tu amba pano ni mitoa yenu kuhu ubu shiku kunga na tashia kuhu inda machine shoes. That's the way. 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 Still in agriculture news, farmers have been engaged in a five-day global learning event on seed enterprise, seed production, and marketing to enhance their knowledge on the protection and proper utilization of indigenous seeds. The event, organized by Oxfam and Community Technology Development Trust, CTDT Zambia, has attracted participation from eight selected countries across Africa and Asia. Michelle Olwinda has the rest of the story. Seeds are a vital component in the agricultural production value chain. With the continued effects of climate change, the planting of high-quality seed is important in attaining crop production. This is why the Community Technology Development Trust and Oxfam are currently implementing a five-year project dubbed Sowing Diversity is Equal to Harvesting Security, which is focused on promotion of indigenous seed production and marketing. Farmers want seed that is affordable, that is accessible, uh, that is um, uh, good for their environmental situation and that is reliable in terms of it being good quality seed. We have together uh, trained farmers. At the moment we decided to commence on a pilot basis instead of uh, going all over the place. We are running this particular project in uh, Shibuyunji and Chikankata. The project, which is currently running in eight selected countries in Africa, Asia and South America, is also aimed at sharing experiences on how to support the development of smallholder farmers. There's a, a very positive uh, response. Uh, of course, uh, we're dealing with different uh, stakeholders, uh, uh, including uh, with governments. Uh, at the uh, local level, for instance, local governments uh, will support the farm and field schools uh, that we use uh, as an approach uh, by providing facilities, uh, by providing also um, formal um, uh, support, re registering a farmer seed group as a seed producer group, for instance, helping them to equipment, helping do them to storage facilities. And government has pledged support to projects targeted at empowering smallholder farmers for them to improve their livelihoods. This, as you know, is in line with the government policy of empowering smallholder farmers to contribute to both household and national food and nutrition security in our country. However, smallholder farmers are calling on government to revise laws on seed enterprise. We are, we are actually on a move to advocate for, for our local seeds to be registered so that we can actually be able to sell or exchange freely. Because at the moment, in regard to the laws, the policies that are there that are governing the seed enterprise, if you are, if you are found selling gangkata or go by red, that is a crime. Michelle Oluwinda for Zanis in Osaka. Now from Western Province, vandalism of Zesco installations has become rampant, resulting in continued and prolonged power outages in some parts of the country. This situation has forced the Zesco management to embark on sensitization programs in order to educate the public on the dangers of vandalizing its installations in Mongo district. Darling Tong Kabembe has more in this story. They are gathered here to be sensitized on the dangers of vandalizing Zesco installations. Mongo District Commissioner Morgan Akaveswa had this to say. We've come in full support 
of Zesco's resolve to address rampant vandalism throughout the country. Zesco installations are servicing this country. When Zesco loses, the citizens of this country are also losing. Those who are using electricity for generation of income. When there is no electricity, there is no generation of income. That is loss of income. Someone is unable to provide for the family, is unable to pay the rent. The economy of this country sinks. The traditional leadership said the development of Western province depends on electricity. <laughs> And this senior security services manager says acts of vandalism amount to losses of power to its esteemed customers. Acts of vandalism always amount into losses, losses of supply to you, our esteemed customers, losses uh, in terms of resources from Zesco Limited, in terms of replacing uh, those things people have vandalized. And we, the country also uh, experiences losses in terms of economic uh, 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 slowdown. This year alone, Zesco Limited has recorded 713 incidences of, uh, of vandalism. To encourage you and appeal to you, members of the public, that uh, the acts of vandalism are acts that we can actually eliminate uh, from our communities as long as we resolve to work with Zesco and we resolve uh, not, to, not to condone those acts of vandalism in our, um, in our communities. The Lambia Police says remains committed to attend to the challenges currently faced by this community in order to, to uh, alleviate the issue of vandalism. The Lambia Police will work hand in hand with this management to ensure that anyone found vandalizing any physical of property will be brought to book. Daniel Tony Kabambe reporting for Zanis in Mongo District, Western Province. And in Eastern Province, a group of faith-based leaders in Chipata have embarked on a revenue-generating project aimed at supporting community outreach programs. The pastors who have launched a cooperative called Tinyamulane Manja Pastors Cooperative Society Limited say they want to take a holistic approach to the gospel by also responding to the physical needs of the community. The Pastors Cooperative is calling on government and the corporate world to partner with them in executing planned revenue generating activities. Abigail Kashweka reports. In order to reach out beyond the gospel by responding to some of the physical challenges communities are faced with, a group of pastors in Chipata have joined hands to explore avenues of earning funds to support this cause. This event marked the launch of Tinyamulane Manja Pastors Cooperative Society Limited and members are appealing for support. The purpose of forming this cooperative is that we as pastors, we want to take the gospel holistically, meaning that we want to serve the community, not only by presenting Christ to them, but also ministering to the physical needs of the community. This is by having many projects that will create jobs for the youth and for the women of the community. We are determined to work together with the government of the day to see to it that poverty is removed from us and that of the citizens of this great nation. Our plans are to get land, which we are believing God to get it very soon. We have already partners who want to partner with us in growing bread onion. We applied for support from uh, many funders as well as a grant from uh, CDF of about 40,000. And we are still believing God and waiting to hear.
hear from them. And we appeal to all well wishers to support the cooperative. The event was graced by a representative of Chipata City Mayor, George Mwanza. This is amazing to have the pastors come together to see how they can solve the highest problems of our nation, Zambia, to remove poverty. I am so happy to hear the purpose of the cooperative to create jobs for the youths and women. This is indeed another problem in our nation. As government, thank you to have such ideas to work with us to, to mitigate the problems. We also see how we can partner with you to bring any necessary support you need to make sure that the cooperative achieves its goals. Meanwhile, in his sermon, Pastor Geoffrey Mavumbo called on the church and the nation to remain united. This braai is one of the fundraising activities the cooperative has so far kick-started with Abigail Kashweka Zanis in Chipata. The European Union, EU, has announced a 60 million kwacha funding support towards research and innovation programs called the Horizon Europe Framework for Safety Actions in Africa. EU delegation to Zambia and Comesa, head of infrastructure, Claudio Bacigalupi disclosed that this follows the gravity of the road safety situation in Africa and the EU-Africa Task Force recommendations on road safety. Speaking during the AfroSafe project launch in Lusaka, Mr. Bacigalupi noted that low- and middle-income countries account for about 93% of approximately 1.35 million preventable deaths in the world each year. Minister of Transport and Logistics Frank Tayali says the involvement of various stakeholders will trigger significant propagation of the safe system principles. Mr. Tayali notes that the huge cost of government resources spent due to road deaths and injuries, which are rapidly worsening. This is in a speech read on his behalf by Ministry of Transport and Logistics Director of Transport, Nkumbu Siami. And therefore, it's in view of the gravity of the road safety situation in Africa and the EU uh, Africa Task Force recommendations on road safety that we are now today here to announce 4 million euros, that is more or less 60 million kwacha, funding support for, uh, from the EU Research and Innovation Program, which is called the Horizon Europe Framework, Horizon, so the Horizon Project. And, uh, in this program is to facilitate collaboration and strengthen the impact of research and innovation in development, supporting and implementation of EU policies while tackling global challenges such as road safety. Road safety is just one of the two successful projects that has been awarded. Then the other one is called TransSafe, which has been already announced. As you may be aware, that annually an estimated number of 1.3 million people are killed as a result of road crashes worldwide. And this figure in Zambia, road crashes have actually become the third killer after HIV and AIDS and malaria. Road deaths and injuries represent a serious and rapidly worsening public health crisis costing the government huge resources. This is a great concern to government, and as we have continued to lose productive lives of our people, and unfortunately most of whom are young people. Uh, when we talk about road safety, mainly we are talking about the five E's. Uh, in terms of engineering, we need safe roads, uh, then we need uh, safer vehicles, we need to have uh, education to educate the road users. And then we need to have the other E to do the enforcement. And lastly, uh, the E is about environment in where the roads are being uh, constructed. Zanis News continues. An enumerator in the ongoing census of population and housing in Limulunga district in Western province is nursing wounds after she was bitten by a dog while on duty. Particulars of the incident are that Diana Ioano was bitten by a dog when she knocked on the door of one of the houses in Ushawad. Three dogs are said to have suddenly appeared as she was knocking and one of them bit her. And to the victim, 
Kandoga Yoano explained that her niece was given a prescription for five anti-rabies injections, which she is currently receiving. And Limulunga District Commissioner Lutangu Lutangu has called on the residents to support the enumerators as they are discharging their duty in the field. Mr. Lutangu says there were reports indicating that some people in certain areas had initially refused to be counted, but later accepted. He has urged members of the public to welcome enumerators when they reach their homes. The exercise, which started on 18th August, will run until 14th September 2022. Mapanza Zono Rural Health Center is set to undergo a facelift after receiving pockets of cement towards the construction of a modern mother's shelter. The center, which has a coverage of about 15,000 people, has been operating without a visitor's shelter and staff houses, despite being the main health facility in the area. Details in this report. It is as odd as the mission itself. Spanning over 100 years, the Mapanza Mission Rural Health Center in Choma District, which is operating under the auspices of the Anglican Diocese of Rusaka, has been running with numerous challenges. We started with the priority list which was given to us by the community, and top of the list was the mortuary which was non-functional and collapsed at that time. And I'm glad to say we managed to renovate the mortuary and also repair the refrigeration such that the mortuary is now functioning well. We still have several projects, and one of them which was the mother shelter, we have ablutions to do, as well as the staff accommodation, which also needs a lot of repair and some need total rehabilitation. A Dangote group of companies has, however, come to the aid of the mission. We would like to hand over 600 bags of cement to the Anglican Diocese. The cement will be used to build the Mapanza Rural Health Center. Our wish is for the center to benefit the community and generations to come. The diocese is happy and promises to do more within the 600 donated pockets of cement. Thank you so very much because we have a challenge with the mother's shelter construction. At the moment, the women are just squatting and the other people that are waiting for patients. So the donation could not have come at a better time other than this. And from that cement, we shall build the blocks and, of course, build the mother's shelter. And I'm sure we will have some left to also build the toilets and a few other things. So you have solved more than one problem for us. Mike Munkombwe, Zanis, in Mapanza Mission, Choma District, Southern Province. Luapula Province Permanent Secretary Maiti Mumba says government does not only appreciate traditional ceremonies as a key unifier in society, but also as a base for cultural tourism. The Permanent Secretary said this when he officiated at this year's Mabila traditional ceremony of the Shila people of Chiengi and Inchilenge districts in Munonga area. The Mabila traditional ceremony celebrates the way of life for the Shila people whose main economic stay is fishing. Earlier, Senior Chief Mununga appealed to government to consider replacing the bridge across the Kalungwisha River. Allow me to mention that the new Don government under the able leadership of Mr. Haka in the Ichlema, President of the Republic of Zambia, appreciates the importance of traditional ceremonies as they are not only a unifier of different ethnic groups, but also offer an opportunity for all the Zambian people to assimilate the importance of our cultural heritage. Traditional ceremonies act as a base for the development and promotion of cultural tourism, which is a catalyst for social economic growth. Government recognizes the role culture plays in national development as it strengthens the process of self-governance and national identity. In order to bring meaning meaningful development to the people, the New Dawn government increased the Constraints Development Fund, CDF, from 1.6 million to 25.7 million per constituents. I therefore wish to implore all royal highnesses to encourage people in all the 15 constituencies of Lapra province to access these funds. The guest of honor, sir, Kalungwishi Bridge is very old and narrow to withstand the pressure coming from the increasing number of heavy trucks 
that are crossing over it. We are therefore asking the government to consider constructing a new bridge as soon as possible because everything has a lifespan. The Copper Queen's victory in the Kosafa Women's Championship has boosted women's interest among soccer fans. Lucky Siame observes that the continuous victory and exceptional performance has increased interest in women's football among soccer fans in Zambia. Meanwhile, another soccer fan, Mathangoma, says the victory is motivating, especially to the women in the country. And soccer fans in Zimba district of Southern Province have congratulated the Shipolopolo national team for winning the 2022 Kosafa Cup. John Cholwe says the women exhibited professionalism and played well in yesterday's match. Another soccer fan, Gift Hatembo, said the Copa Queens made the country proud. This is the first time that the Zambian female team has won the tournament since its establishment in 2002. We end Zanis News on a sporting note. Mayors and council secretaries across the country teamed up against members of parliament in a football match and carried the day with two goals to one. The aim of the match was to build unity and cooperation between the two offices. Ministry of Local Government Permanent Secretary for Administration Mambo Hamaundu witnessed the match and was pleased that the parliamentarians and civic leaders are making strides to work together in the development of local communities. Details in the following report. Mayors and town council secretaries have adopted sports as one among other activities that would be used to create stronger bonds among leaders. Civic leaders from across the country teamed up against members of parliament in a football match at the Bank of Zambia Sports Complex. The match was witnessed by the Ministry of Local Government Permanent Secretary as well as Local Government Association of Zambia President. As the people, we begin, to, we begin to play together. If we can play together, it means we can work together. So the importance really is uh, for us to play together and work together and develop the country together. We are also picking it from where the President has been talking about unity. The president saying, oh, let's unite and work together. And this is exactly what we, are, we, are, we have shown today. We have shown the people of Zambia to say, you know, as the mayor's council chairperson and the MPZ, we are one. Members of parliament and their opponents are looking forward to more games of this kind and are hopeful that this activity has built unity. This is time to win. Time for politics. It's not. Okay, we have CDF which we are all supposed to administer, working together with the councils, the members of parliament, together with the government. And so this is a time to save our people, and we have just begun the process to start harmonizing our relationship. And we saw that sports can be used to unite the two offices, because in the past there's been a lot of friction because of the member, member of parliament and council chairperson. And we moved in the presidential directive, uh, the last meeting we had, uh, when we met the president, he said, look, yes, sir, socialize, yes. work with the people, uh, with the members of parliament, and this is more like a presidential directive. We're following what the president guided when he met us to say, can you unite members of parliament as well as council chairpersons and mayors? The mayors and town council secretaries won the match by two goals to one. Reporting for Zanis Sports in Lusaka, Sharon Walia. As we end Zanis News, a recap of the headlines. Security wings cast safety nets at Gold Ridge site in Mumbwa. Vandalism of Zesco cables prolonging power outages. EU injects 60 million kwacha funding towards research and innovation in Africa and parliamentarians and civic leaders lock horns in soccer match. Well, that's all we had for you tonight on Zanis News. My name is Chisham Tale. Good evening and pleasant viewing.